All right, so um, in case you, you don't know me, I'm, I'm Lewis Rosenthal. Um, if you've come to Warpstock in the United States, you've seen me there. Um, pretty much almost, almost every year for the last, I don't know how many, I can't count backwards that far. Um, and I'm the, the managing member of Arkanoe. Um, anyone here not know what Blue Lion is? Good, good. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to talk about today is what you can expect when you purchase a Blue Lion license to get for your money. What I'm saying are forward-looking statements. Now that's a, that's a financial disclaimer that accountant types like me usually use. What it means is Nothing is set in stone. Because we do not yet have a product shipping, some of what I'm about to tell you is what we want to put in the box, what we plan to put in the box, what we would like to put in the box, but I'm not making any guarantee that it's going to be in the box. Because as we like to say, it's not a deal until the ink is dried on the paper. Okay, you're talking like a politician. Good, now, so the box rattle. There you go. What <laughs> the box rattle? <laughs> it's not coming with a headset like Warp 4. <laughs> Next slide. So, as I say, there are a lot of details that are still in flux. There's a considerable amount of third-party work that is going into the package, and those agreements have not yet been finalized. Um, I can certainly talk about the drivers that will be in Blue Lion because we have a, a good idea as to what's going to be there. And I can talk about the support terms and the additions, absolutely. Some of the other things when I'm talking about, you know, we're going to have multiple editors and we're going to have multiple calculators. Well, we're not sure what those editors are yet. We're not sure what those calculators are yet. Slide, please. So pre-sale concerns. Gee, I have an Ecom Station 1.0 license. I don't know if it's time for me to upgrade. I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't really see the value in buying a, new, a license for a new operating system. Slide. So for whom is virtual, is um, virtual box, listen to me, is, <laughs> is Blue Lion a good fit? If you're doing a new bare metal installation of OS2, uh, unless you have an older machine, you're going to need the drivers that are in Blue Lion, such as the latest ACPI driver. Um, maybe you're doing an installation in a virtual machine. There's still stuff to offer there. Yes, VirtualBox will run Warp 4 very nicely, but you're going to get the 32-bit stack with uh, with um, Blue Lion, and what we have found through some interesting conversations is that under VMware, at least, on some of the latest Intel processors uh, as the, the hypervisor, without the latest ACPI driver, the host performance suffers. So if you're planning to run Blue Lion in a virtualized environment under VMware on a very new server platform, you will likely need Blue Lion in order to get the full capacity of that processor in that host machine. And multiply that bottleneck by as many virtual machines as you plan to run under that installation of VMware on that box. That's a real value that Blue Lion provides in a virtualized environment. In VirtualBox, um, there are still issues with VirtualBox running multiple virtualized CPUs for OS2. Uh, I can actually get it to, to boot now into VirtualBox 5 on a 64-bit on a Linux host. But it doesn't take long before OS2 just stops running when I've got multiple processors enabled. Um, that's a virtual box thing. That's not an OS2 thing. There's not much we can do other than work as closely with our friends at, at Oracle um, to resolve those, those issues. 
Under VMware, I don't think that, that we see that issue. I think that you can enable multiple CPUs in, a, in a, an OS2 or Blue Lion guest under VMware without a, a problem like that. But there's other things that are, that are useful for, um, for a VirtualBox uh, installation. If you've got an existing bare metal installation of OS2 uh, or ECS, then all of the driver subscription content is going to ship in one package in Blue Lion. And you'll get the regular updates that you would get in the subscription for your Blue Lion support subscription. And so you get one installable unified package. Existing virtual installations for the same reason. So if you've got an existing virtual installation, it still makes sense to get a Blue Lion uh, license for your, your new installations or to upgrade what you have. We also intend, fully intend, to be as backward compatible to older systems as possible. So if you have OS2 or ECS installed on an older system, don't think that just because we're targeting newer hardware as our, as our um, concern for hardware support, that we're leaving the older hardware behind. I will tell you this, that as we have gone through the list of device drivers for audio and older networking cards, a lot of the old ISA stuff we are removing from the package, unless we have a compelling reason to keep it in there. Um, it's very difficult for us to support that stuff at this point. Um, and if you're a current subscriber to the Arca Noe subscription, your value is protected because, as I will show you in a later slide, if you've got, uh, if you just renewed your subscription and you have another six months to go, you're going to get a credit for that six months towards your purchase of a Blue Lion license. So you don't, you don't end up with six months of a subscription that really does you no good because you're getting a new product. You're going to get something back for that value. Slide, please. <laughs> Common goals of, for Blue Lion. Slide. So we want to make OS2 viable for existing installations, obviously. First, do no harm. We're definitely not planning to break anything. Um, and we want to make it maintainable going forward. So if you have a collection of software or you have a small business and you run OS2 as the backbone of your business, or maybe you don't have a small business, maybe you have a large enterprise, you should not have to change your platform simply because IBM decided in its infinite wisdom to give up on the OS2 business. Okay? Um, we want to make OS2 installable on modern hardware. That has been a real problem for far too long. And I can't tell you, I'm dealing with one of my consulting clients right now who wants me to do a hardware upgrade for him. He's got a small business. He has a couple machines. He does everything in pairs. So he always has a hot spare machine ready to go. And he said, um, you know, you built this machine for me about five years ago. And I know it's got a quad core in it, but I want something more. I don't know what more, but... I have to sit and scratch my head and think, well, right now I got to pick a board for this machine that's going to be OS2 compatible. And what about the drives in it? And he wants SSDs, so I got to check, I got to make sure the SSDs support legacy configuration. It's a hassle. Our, our objective going forward is to make Blue Lion as easily installed on modern hardware as a modern Linux distribution would be. Notice I didn't say a modern Windows installation, okay? Good guy. <laughs> um, and we want to make it installable across a wider array of, of hardware, from notebooks to desktops to servers and even tablets. Now, of course, tablets are becoming harder for us because we don't have that many choices in terms of Intel-based tablets. Are there any Intel-based tablets currently being made? Secret? Yes. I had a... Mm -hmm. but, uh, this is not so 
not possible to support unless there is UAP support. Yeah, I had a, I had a hunch that that was going to be the, the issue. So we do have that EFI problem, and that we're aware of that issue. Um, of uh, we're aware of that limitation. We're also on the um, the the UEFI um, group, the consortium, uh, mainly so we can stay current on what they're doing, not because we're really inputting a lot of stuff. Although we have been contacted by them uh, to ask us about what our specific needs would be. And of course I said, well, our needs are anything that ran in 1996. We'd like you to maintain that. Yeah. And of course the answer came back, uh, what is that? yeah, yeah, 1996. Well, let's see, I was in grade school then. Is I, okay, thank you very much. I <laughs> thank you for his time. Slide, please. Uh, so we want to make OS2 useful for contemporary content. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is um, we all hear this buzzword web 2.0 and of course everyone says, no problem. Everyone says, well, you know, what the devil is web 2.0? Well, you know the way you load up a web page in Firefox and all of a sudden the processor gets pegged to the top because the JavaScript engine is working as hard as it possibly can? That really shouldn't happen and we want to look to address that so that you don't need to go to another platform to render the content that you want to, that you want to view. Um, we don't want you to have to fire up uh, a Windows machine to use Microsoft Office. We want to make OS2 secure for the 21st century. Um, we're working with a client now. The client is using peer services. Landman hashes are running rampant across the network. Security came in and they said, oh no, we got to get this stuff off the network. This has got to go. Mm -hmm. Well, so what are you going to do with warp 4? How, how are you going to, how are you going to do anything more secure than a landman hash for user authentication? We have a solution for that and it's Kerberos authentication and we have a working Kerberos implementation and we have a working Samba 4 plugin for NetDrive and we can do the latest SMB um, dialect and we can authenticate to Windows controlled domains that are set to the highest security level supported by server 2008 release 2 and server 2012 release 2. Um, that makes OS2 a network client that is able to be supported in enterprise because it's no longer the weakest link in the chain. Once again, Windows is the weakest link in the chain. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> An installation should be as comprehensive as possible. So when you install the operating system, if there are 50 applications that you really want to get pushed onto the machine, you shouldn't have to go through 50 separate installations to make that happen. You should either be able to do that with the initial install or with your next round of updates through the Arkanoa package manager and get all of the software that you need to run installed and, and configured on that machine to make it usable as quickly as possible. You shouldn't have to spend a day just setting it up. We want to automate maintenance and, and update tasks. The Arkanoa package manager in front of YUM and RPM does that. So when we have new fixes available, you'll be able to pull them down and get them installed right away. We want to keep that update channel going as long, forever. As, I mean, we don't, we don't have an end date. Arkanoa is not a, an entity that's going to expire at any point. We're planning to keep going. And essentially, we want to keep OS2 on par with modern Linux distributions in so far as the, the hardware that's supported under Linux. As David was saying before, if you've got crappy hardware, we really don't want to hear about that. But if you have good solid hardware and Linux will run on that hardware, we should be able to run on that hardware. Now if it's, you know, if it's only Windows compliant, there's not much we can do about that. Okay, that's, that's really not our thing. But if you think about a good 32-bit Linux distribution running on that particular thing that you have, we should be able to do that. That's what our plan is. Slide, please. Okay, so we're going to have two editions of 
Blue Lion, sort of like the way we have two separate tracks for our subscription service now. Slide, please. We have a personal edition, and of course the personal edition will come with a lower price tag. It's not meant for business use, mainly because we're not going to give the level of support that a business would require. Yeah. We, we can't for the, the lower price tag. Um, but, but other than that, the content is exactly the same. You'll get six months of updates and support with the purchase of a license. As I say, if you have an existing subscription, whatever's left on that subscription will get credited pro rata against the purchase of the Blue Lion license. And the updates for the support will be renewable, just like the, the Blue Lion subscription is renewable. We have not set pricing for the operating system license or for the support renewal yet, but expect that it will be aggressive. This will be pretty much our best deal. Um, but again, this is the key to remember. Support is on a best effort basis. If you open a ticket about a problem, we will do our best to deal with your problem. But we're not going to take commercial customers and have them sit aside while we try to sort out why your USB scanner isn't working. I'm sorry. We'll probably refine that wording in the in the license agreement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slide, please. The commercial edition is meant for business use. If you have a large enterprise or you have a small business and your small business depends upon one OS2 system always running to run your cash register, that's what you're going to want. Because if your cash register stops working, you're not taking in any money. Or you've got to do everything on paper and a pencil again, right? You open a ticket for us with a commercial license, and we take notice. And we, we focus on that ticket. Um, instead of six months of updates and support, you get 12 months of update and support included with this license. So you get a longer term before you need to renew. Like the other one, if you've got an existing commercial subscription, that will get credited pro rata to your purchase of a commercial Blue Lion subscription. Um, the subscription will include the drivers. The, essentially, the, the updates for Blue Lion will be a superset of the software and driver subscription now. So whatever's in the software and driver subscription now, will be included in the Blue Lion update subscription, plus additional features uh, and applications that are only in Blue Lion. Slide, please. <laughs> I'd like to talk for a minute about the installer. Slide, please. Which, which, <laughs> which I've just seen myself for the first time. Uh, for those of you who aren't in on the inside joke, Keith is doing the installer for us. And that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, pre-boot the installer. Um, when you're installing the, the operating system, you should be able to boot from optical media or USB media. How many new laptops are coming with no optical drives at all? So you're going to need to be able to install from something else. How about when you're doing an ECS install and it says, if your drivers are on a floppy diskette, please insert it now. Right? Where's the slot? There's, it's, floppies are gone, right? <laughs> so you should be able to install this operating system with, with a USB stick. You should be able to burn the ISO to a USB, boot from the USB, and do your installation. If you have additional drivers that need to go in, you should be able to put those drivers on a USB stick and feed the USB stick, and the installer should pick up and run from there. Yeah. <laughs> on this, this one USB stick, some 
Now that's an interesting that's an interesting thought. We hadn't we hadn't considered that possibility. We only have one, so we'll need to ship we'll need to ship the the operating system with a USB Y cable, so you can plug in your other. That's an interesting thought. We do want to support network installations as well. So I mean, there are certainly workarounds that we can, we can look at. But that's a, that's a good point about laptops that only come with one USB port on them. Um, you'll have network connectivity from installation media. In pre-boot, you can, you can select your network card. Or actually, we should detect it for you. That's the, the plan. And even if it's wireless, you'll have an option when it's booting up to press F1 so you can enter your SSID and any of your other pertinent information. So that from the pre-boot menu or if you need to run the maintenance environment and you boot from the, your installation media to get there, your network should all be up and running so you can get out to the internet. How many times do you run the, the maintenance console for ECS and you realize, I have to get that from the internet? <laughs> So we have a new installer from the ground up. It's not the Ecom Station installer. This isn't your grandfather's installer. Um, this is this is a completely rewritten installer, rewritten from scratch. Keith is doing the 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 GUI for us for the installer. Very gooey. Very gooey. <laughs> the extremely gooey installer. You will not have any more key codes to enter during the install, I promise. Um, <laughs> the way your, your drivers are signed from your subscription, your ISO will be signed the same way. So when you download your installation media image, it will be signed with your serial number in the image. And you'll have a useful maintenance environment. It'll have, because networking will be available, you're going to have a browser, so you'll be able to get to the internet to get information that you need to maintain your system, assuming it's broken, and that's why you would have gone to your maintenance system anyway. And it'll have some useful tools. I'm not sure exactly what those useful tools will be, but trust me, you'll have useful tools. Slide, please. The boot up, the kernel, and the drivers. So you'll be able to um, boot it by itself without a boot manager installed. Uh, or you can install Airboot. We don't plan to support um, boot manager because it's getting, it's getting difficult. Boot manager just doesn't scale well to the drives we have today. Um, so that's what, you'll, that's what you'll have. Kernels, you're going to get an upgraded uh, an updated warp 4 and you'll get an updated SMP kernel. We're not going to do a uni kernel for this release. Does anyone need a uni kernel? Good. Um, with the latest fixes um, and you'll be able to mark your um, Apache Open Office DLLs to load high and when you close Apache Open Office it won't take down your whole system. That's a good feature right there, isn't it? Um, and we're going to have a new loader that's going to be uh, in some part based on QS in it. It will have support for a RAM disk above, above 4 gigabytes, but it won't require configuration. So out of the box with no configuration file, it should work exactly the way the old loader works right now. If you add the flag to the configuration file and you've got 8 gigs of RAM in your system, you should be able to configure a 4 gig RAM disk up there. Formatted HPFS. It, the RAM disk will not do JFS. We've had that discussion. And it, it really, you know, for a 4 gig drive in memory, what's the difference? Uh, it's not like you need to worry about keeping a journal in case you have to run a check disk on your RAM drive. <laughs> uh, slide, please. Obviously, ACPI, Multimac, UniAud, USB, JFS, just like what you get in your software subscription. Danny and AHCI, 
All the latest versions available at the time of GA will be in Blue Lion. Panorama and Snap. I uh, expect an updated Snap now that we finally have the repo working. You can, <laughs> you can, you can do that checkout. A um, couple main things about Snap, but again, the, Steve, is doing, Steve is doing a session on Snap tomorrow, so he'll go into it in detail. But there are a couple remaining nasty bugs in Snap um, running on uh, SMP systems, number one. And we all know that the, the chips that are supported by Snap have already been long discontinued by the manufacturers. So if you get a brand new machine, it probably Snap isn't going to be able to do anything about accelerating the video. We're, we want to add new chipset support. So we'll see how far along we get. The fixes for SMP, I am 99% sure, will make it into the Snap included in Blue Lion. Additional chipsets may come after the fact. But here's the great part. If you get a Blue Lion license, you're going to get those updates as they become available in the subscription. So there's no sense in, you know, when we finally go GA saying, well, I'll wait until Snap gets updated and then doing it. And believe me, I'm not leading anyone on. I mean, our plan is to add these, these chips for, for Snap. So mm -hmm. I can run a full screen DOS text, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can't run Windows, you can't. You can't run we know that there are some issues with, yeah. with DOS sessions under the very last chip that was done and it wasn't completed. Hmm. Yeah. It's sort of odd the way Alt Richmond transferred the code to us, uh, and it took Steve a long time to sift through the code to get it into the repository. Um, we had a mix of DOS and Unix line endings in, in a bunch of the files mm -hmm. and thousands of files. Um, no sources for the documents, for instance, so I don't have, I don't have source code for a lot of the, for the manual. That's all PDF that's got to be ripped out of the PDF and reconverted. And there's so many details. When you go into actually doing an operating system release, and I don't need to tell Menso this or... Roderick this, but when you go into doing an operating system release, there is so much other stuff that you have to deal with. There's documentation, there's licensing agreements for all that third party stuff that goes in there. There's the end user license agreement for your own users. All that stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with making the thing work, but there are details that have to be handled one way or another. And documentation for Snap, our, our license with Alt Richmond tells us that um, you know, what we need to remove from the documentation in terms of copyright notices, um, all that's got to get changed. Luckily, I have a very ambitious 18-year-old uh, daughter at home, and she is a whiz with word processing and very technically minded, and I sort of set her about the task and gave her an NDA. <laughs> Make sure she doesn't get a friend. <laughs> um, we are planning on having a, a special edition of Net Drive in Blue Lion, uh, mainly because we want to provide the Samba 4 plug-in support so that Samba 4 networking will be available out of the box. But we don't want to detract from sales of Net Drive that handles you know, 50 other plugins. So we're working with the author of NetDrive to come up with some kind of a reasonable solution so we can do that. I seem to remember a year or maybe two years ago, there was one guy here who was working on a Dropbox plugin for NetDrive. Bit, Bitwise has a Dropbox plugin for NetDrive. Okay. They do have that. Okay. Um, that's not available through our store. That's only available through their store. But I, I am told it works very well. Okay. How's that? Was that a good plug, guys? I'll buy right. it. Good. <laughs> um, Lars has been working on USB MSD, with, which does some interesting things for huge unpartitioned media. Um, we want to include that in, in Blue Lion as well so that 
when your Windows friends hand you a stick and they say, oh yeah, that video's on that stick. All you need to do is put it in your computer and you put it in and you say, well, I got a drive letter, but there's nothing. Or I put it in, I didn't get a drive letter. We're, we really want to address that. Uh, PS Print, um, and a new, which is a, a new PostScript printer driver pack with updated printer drivers for cups as well as native printing. Um, we've been doing a lot of a lot of work on that recently, um, and as well as PIN, which is the utility for converting PostScript definition files to add them to the driver. There was some nasty buglets that IBM left in the in the code. There's a surprise um, in the in the DDK, and um, we've we've spent considerable time working on, on those. I think that uh, Alex is probably going to talk about some of that in his presentation. Networking. And I want to get through this quickly. <laughs> Only because I'm watching the clock up here. Um, so what are we going to keep in the box in, in Blue Lion? Peer services and Netware Requester. If you absolutely positively have a dependency on, on Peer networking, IBM uh, land manager, client, we're not going to rip that out. We're licensed by IBM to, to resell it as part of Blue Lion. It's more effort to rip it out than to leave it in. Uh, the Netware requester, the plan is to leave it in. Um, there's still some discussion going on about uh, what the licensing agreement is with Novell on that. Uh, honestly, I don't think that Novell, well, now Microfocus, really, really cares whether we leave it in or not. Uh, the last 32-bit TCP IP stack from IBM will be included. Samba 4 client, which will be included as a plug-in to NetDrive uh, with support for Kerberos uh, authentication. It also does LM version 2 authentication. Um, a Kerberos ticket manager, because managing Kerberos tickets from the command line is a pain for a lot of people. Um, does everyone understand the way Kerberos works with tickets? No? Okay. Kerberos is a very interesting authentication mechanism in that your password never crosses the wire to the server. So, at least not in, not in clear text. So. What happens is when the server authenticates you, you get a ticket from that server saying that indeed with this ticket you are who you say you are. Tickets normally have an expiration time on them. By default on Windows machines it's 10 hours. After which you need to either renew the ticket or request a new ticket. Well, you need to have some way of managing those tickets because otherwise you won't know when your authentication has expired and when it's time to get a new ticket or any method for automatically renewing tickets so that you can stay logged in. Because otherwise, you go to sleep at night, you leave the machine logged on, you get up in the morning, and there's nothing. And there's nothing. Exactly. And we all know what WPS does when, when you try to open a, a, a network map share that's no longer there. And it just hangs and hangs and hangs. So, um, a ticket manager, um, there's also a, a replacement class for the, the drives object that deals with that and it refreshes those in the background and we're talking to, that was developed by uh, Vitaly, the NetDrive developer, and we're talking to him about adding that component to Blue Lion as well. Um, we have a new Network Adapters and Protocol Services Manager. Uh, if, if you're running ECS 2.2, you've seen pretty much the, the earlier version of, of NAPS. It's been uh, enhanced a little bit. Um, that's uh, Alex Taylor's work. Um, a network browser and drive mapping utility, if you're familiar with EVFS GUI, it's, that's really the front end, but without the E added to it. And we're not replacing the E with an A. As Alex says, we're not really into McBranding everything. Um, an IP firewall, we would like to include um, some version of uh, Enjoy in the product. We're still working with our Bitwise friends about that. Um, but the plan is that you should have a secure networking installation. If you choose to have a secure networking installation, all bets are off if you're using Peer. 
All right, not my fault. Someone hacks the machine when you're sending landman hashes over your network. That's not something you want to open a ticket with me about. Um, but the idea is that we want to include a firewall so that your machine can be as secure as you need it to be when you install it from the get-go. Slide, please. Printing. Slide. <clears throat> so the existing native print driver packs will be in there. Um, a new print management utility that will help you import new drivers. Um, and we're going to include CUPS 2 in the package. That should make it easier because there's nothing more daunting than when someone says to you, whoa, you only have native printing installed, you really need CUPS for that. And then you look at the CUPS page and it's that long as a, all right, where do I start? CUPS 2 will be, will be available for installation at the time that you, you do your, your setup. Next slide. Some usability enhancements. So we have a light version of X Workplace. It's a little bit more, a little bit more feature rich than, um, than E Workplace. Um, there'll be new desktop wallpapers and they'll be sized for traditional four to three displays as well as widescreens. Um, Uh, Alex has done this, this latest build of it for, for our alpha builds right now, but there's still work to be done. Will it be in the NetLabs repository, or do you see work on another? Ultimately, it, it will be there. Yes, it, it, this is not, we're not forking the project, so whatever we do is going to end up there. And then you'll be able to build one or the other at the same time. Um, we plan on adding some new sound schemes. I know none of this stuff has any, any real, you know, we're all trying to get sound working, right? So I'm telling you we're going to have new sound effects. So the schemes will be there. The schemes will be there. That's, these two are projects that I handed off to my daughter, and she's been collecting stuff. And we have a repository, and she'll be committing stuff to the repository. And Alex is our director of... He is the director of, of the user interface, so he will make the final determination as to what, gets the, what makes the cut, what goes into the product, so on and so forth. New X Center widgets uh, for removable devices. Um, the removable device widget, the USB stick widget, has some really nasty issues with it. Um, I, I will tell you this, that uh, here's, here's a tip about creating tickets. Please don't submit a ticket to, to David and tell him that you lost data when you used the USB stick widget to eject your stick, all right? Because I'll, I'll give you the answer to that ticket right now. Don't use the USB stick widget, all right? The safest way is to open the drive object, right click on the, on the drive, and click eject. That's the safest way to get, get rid of the stick. There's no visible feedback other than the fact that the letter disappears from the, from the display. There's no if, beep. If you count 10 seconds. Right, okay. Uh, if you're just typing at the command line, then you do an eject. Eject, same yep. Thing? Same th exactly the same thing. The new stick widget that we have planned, the new removable device widget, because ultimately it should handle all removable devices, right? Whether they're USB or ultimately eSATA. Mm -hmm. um, all that it should do is exactly that call that eject command and make it eject. Yeah. And then give you some feedback. And give you some feedback to let you know, yes, it's been ejected. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Instead of just, maybe. do I, don't I, you know. Right. Um, you stick another stick in and you, and you go and you go, gee, that looks just like the one that looks Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, and a Kerberos ticket manager also we want to implement as a, a, a widget. A new file open container. Multi-column? What, the multi-column uh, file open container? Yeah. Um, Is this the same as the last new file open container? The plan is that it will be essentially the same as the last new file open container. Because there are a number of small problems 
especially um, when I look at uh, a number of programs which use the file open container in a slightly different way than the standard. Okay. Way. And then you are missing some things or you can't do some things. Like, for example, you go to the, the file window and normally you type the first letter and it goes down. Sometimes it doesn't. It seems because it's mm. a proprietary version mm -hmm. of the file open container okay. that something seems not to work. We have a, um, a separate um, Mantis project. Yeah. That's a private Mantis project for developers working on that. I'm going to add you to that list, okay. and you can open <laughs> open <laughs> tickets. I'm going to get it. We do not have the source for it. It's it's a third party application. We don't have the source for it. They have the source. For it. They have the source for it. They have the source for it. It's an ongoing concern. That company is still in business, and, and we anticipate that company will continue in business for the foreseeable future. I mean, we talked about a couple of options for this, including uh, X-File. Anyone use X-File in the room from Codesmith Software, Michael Schillingford? It's a great file open container, but it's Michael's essentially gone away and so and we have no access to the source code and getting access to him is difficult I haven't gotten him to respond yeah, yeah, it's there you go um, that's a <laughs> PNG desktop item uh, objects uh, icons rather for those whopping big displays that everyone's getting now so that you don't end up with these so large icon, uh, yes and uh, a way to, to edit PNG icons. Because right now the IBM ICO editor doesn't handle PNG. It doesn't handle all things. Correct. So we actually have someone working on a PNG icon editor hmm. application. Um, and new fonts. Alex will talk about his new fonts. Um, he's, if, you've, if you've followed the releases on Hobbs, he's, uh, he's put up, uh, he's packaged a few of the droid fonts. Slide, please. Apps and applets. Um, we want to include a CD and DVD burning utility. It may not be as fully functional as DVD CD toys. And we do not want you to not buy a license for CD DVD toys. But we do want you to be able to burn a disc when you need to burn a disc. I mean, that's, that's the important thing. An archive manager. Um, you mean like warp in? Uh, what do you mean? No, an archive manager like um, like uh, or like Zippy, okay. but not as full featured as Zippy, okay. because we don't want you to not buy a license for Zippy simply because you have a way to unzip files in yeah. Blue Lion. If the idea is that if you have to make zip files, you need to split zip files, and you need to test zip files. You really need to have an application to do that. Um, new view will be included. Um, I, well, I noticed that Ronald has made some some uh, commits recently, so I think that he's he's finally getting back into it. Uh, I'm going to be pinging him about that soon. Hmm. Tickets for it. Where? Um, oh, where to where to enter tickets for New View at uh, NetLabs. Uh, new View is a NetLabs uh, project these days. Updated Lucid document viewer. Um, if you prefer Lucid to QPDF view, and I know some people in the back don't, uh, but if you do prefer it, we have a new build of Lucid that uses the system installed Poplar library. So if you install Poplar from Arkanoi Package Manager or Yum, um, this version of Lucid will use that to render the PDFs. Um, between, between that and the updated comp GCC compiler. Oh. <laughs> He's thinking you're talking too slowly. 
Between that and the updated GCC compiler, this build we have is probably 30% faster at rendering PDFs than the last, the last build. Now that 30% is really just sort of an off-the-cuff number, but I've loaded 1,000, 2,000 page PDFs, and I can noticeably flip through the pages much faster. Um, latest Apache Open Office will be on the disk, so you'll be able to install that at the time. The latest Firefox and Thunderbird and SeaMonkey will also be available for installation. Uh, other applets, uh, clock synchronization, we'll have an updated clock synchronization utility um, that will manage your TZ string so that you don't need to remember how that's supposed to go. Um, the standard OS2 TCP IP utilities will be in there. Um, essentially anything that's shipped with Warp 4 uh, will, be, will be there. The services and diagnostic aids. Um, Lars has been working on uh, a new hardware manager device class, which is really nice. That will be included. Um, so you actually get some useful information when you go to the hardware manager uh, object. Uh, and not just telling you that, you yes, you do have a CPU in the machine. <laughs> um, the um, multimedia classes and applets, um, Chris's multimedia classes will be included. Um, I'm not sure what other applets yet. We haven't quite nailed all those details. The, the calculator that I use all the time ends up being that HP 43 calculator which has all the scientific stuff in it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I have no idea what the status of that is, except I'll probably end up adding it. <laughs> well, you know, we had, you know, again, these are, the, these are the sort of things that when we have a staff meeting and we start talking about specific areas of Blue Lion that we want to cover, and we started talking about calculators, we lost, we lost two hours discussing which calculator was the best one to include. And probably a week later, it dawned on me, why don't we just include a whole bunch of them? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Install whichever calculator you like. Yeah. So I'll, I'll add that to my, my list, the, the HP. Cal I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's really, really handy. Um, and it's got a bunch of conversion stuff in it, too, if you, you know, forget. Um, but it's an equivalent of the 43 without any of the programmability. Right. But it will do anything that it could do. That's the one that's on Hobbs, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I have that one. Um, I think this is the last slide. See? Told you it was the last slide. Then I'll have a question. <laughs> and here's an answer. <laughs> a lot of disk drives are now formatted differently in standard hardware. Uh, what is it? GPT? GPT. We are working on a solution for GPT. Interestingly enough, GPT... All these technologies are interrelated. So, UEFI, GPT, SSD, all of this stuff sort of ties together in a neat little package, along with the two terabyte device limitation yeah. that we have. And we are looking at addressing all of those so that we can ultimately install and run from GPT formatted media into partitions larger than, onto devices and partitions larger than two terabytes. We know that JFS supports larger than two terabytes. Certainly on, on, on Linux it, it does, and even the code that, that came over from when IBM released it will do more than two terabytes. But, you know, we need to be able to see more than two terabytes in order to, to do that. It is on the list. I do not think that we are going to be near that at the time of the initial Blue Line release, but so look for it yeah. in an upcoming the update. I, I ask this is because I bought recently this laptop with NVIDIA on, but apart from that small fact, um, I couldn't get anything to run initially mm -hmm. because the hard disk of 500 gigabytes mm -hmm. was GDP. So GPT. Had, GPT, sorry. So I had to take off all the old stuff, reformat it, right. to get things running. Well, it's on going the, to be on almost every laptop, I think. On the upside, uh, DFC is GPT aware. Yeah. And so, and, and we have an OEM engine 
for DFC in Blue Lion. So we'll be able to detect if you've got a GPT disc and say, hey, this disc is GPT. We need it. We need a, you know, a standard MBR on this, this media. And it should flip that over for you. So what you're saying is I have, for example, a GPT disc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I say, okay, I've got here some room. Right. I'm going to put a JF, JFS petition on. Mm -hmm. And all it does is hey, write Sorry, we need question. to move to the next question. Okay. If there are questions. Because was... the coffee break is... Uh... Okay. Oh, we're into the coffee break. Well, yeah. priorities. Louis, <laughs> John. Thank you. About fees. Hmm. Yes, one of my hobbies. <laughs> well, I will tell you this. Uh, obviously, the the first um, the first release is going to be English. Our agreement with with IBM does not specify that we are limited to the English version of OS two. So, as far as we're concerned, every language that IBM made available for OS two, we should be able to release for for Blue Lion. I mean, we're, we're licensed to release it for Blue Lion. Um, once we get the English version of Blue Lion out, we'll re-energize the translators, and I want to thank you for your, your work with the, the Arkanoi Package Manager translations. Uh, we're going to re-energize the translators list, and we'll see what needs to be translated for all the other stuff that we have in there. But obviously, that's a, that's a major concern for us, is that we want to be able to... to the light went out there. Have non non English <laughs> versions. I have another question here on the IRC from Martin Interbidis asking what there's anything to be said about pricing. Aggressive. <laughs> yes, that that's the word I would use. Um, the pricing hasn't been set yet. Uh, I would I would say that you can expect that the commercial version will be considerably more than the personal version, um, but I think it, rough, rough numbers, um, I would say that for the commercial version, you're not looking at, um, you're not looking at more than a Windows license, okay? How's that? How's that? I mean, you're not, we're not going to, we're not going to put a sticker price of a thousand dollars on a license. I, we're not going to put a sticker price of five hundred dollars on a license. Okay, so there are so many third-party components that are still in flux. We don't know how, mu how much licensing we're going to need to pay out on the back end yet. So it's very difficult for us to nail down a price tag as to what we're, what we're going to have there. And then whatever price tag we set for the personal edition, which is going to be pretty close to break even for us, we need to figure what is the value that our support brings to the commercial version in order to set the price for the commercial version. So that's the best I can do on price right now. It's, it's too early. Anything else come in via IRC? No. Nope. Everyone in IRC, everyone in the world knows everything about Blue Lion. <laughs> Should have had some of them come in and do the... the what is the future of Wapin? Hmm? What is the future of Wapin? I haven't seen it in your list. Warpin. 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 What's the future? Oh, the future of Warpin? Uh, I'm going to talk more about Warpin tomorrow when I talk about uh, YUM and RPM and Arkanoi Package Manager. Um, look, Warpin is, it's out there, it works. There are packages that install via Warpin. Uh, certainly our updates are still via Warpin now. Uh, we haven't transitioned to, to RPM yet. Uh, the plan ultimately is for Arkanoi Package Manager to handle warp-in archives the same way it handles RPMs. So I'll talk about that tomorrow. But absolutely, we have we have no problem. That will be you know, part of this installation too. You're you're going to get all those installation utilities. Sure. Anything else? Yes. What kind of system would be thirty-two bit or thirty-two bit? Thirty-two bit. Here's the, here's the thing, in order to, to use the memory above the four gigabyte boundary for, for the RAM disk, we have to perform a trick known as 
uh, PAE support, yeah. programmable address extensions. We only have partial support for that right now. That partial support allows us to create a RAM disk up there, but we can't put program code into that space and use it. We would love to be able to do that. And we have the absolute right in our contract with IBM to do what we need to do to the kernel if we want to make that happen. So we haven't ruled anything out yet. 64-bit is off the table. OS2 is a 32-bit operating system, and even if we had a 64-bit kernel, all of our other applications are 32-bit. So we're, you know, we're all dressed up with nowhere to go. Although the hardware field is changing a lot, and there's a lot of choice, and there's a lot of manufacturers, I would love to have some sort of page of golden configs, uh, like, like a Nexus or devices that are being recommended by Iconella as we are working right now with a uh, a RAID manufacturer in Taiwan that makes hardware RAID solutions, internal and external. Um, they were very good in working with us to resolve a bug in their firmware for an earlier release of, of one of their products. And we're working with them to make one of their newer products more compatible. And I've told them that we would really like to be able to recommend their equipment as our supported RAID solution. Yeah. And that's, that's a long-term goal for us, is to be able to say, you know, even if we don't say models, we say manufacturers. Yeah. And then go to those manufacturers and say to them, I have Blue Lion, what's going to run? Yeah. And then the manufacturer says, oh, we know Blue Lion. Because, you know, half the time I talk to these people and they say, OS2? Who's using OS2? <laughs> and I say, would you like me to run down a list of Fortune 500 companies that are using OS2 and don't even know it? Um, so the idea is to make them aware that, that there is still a viable market to, to stay compatible with us. And for us, of course, to remain as compatible as we, as we possibly can. Again, the goal is that if you can install it, and you can get Linux to run with that hardware, we should be able to do it too. And that's a, you know, that's sort of a, it's a software and a hardware thing. Because what they do in firmware, we can't, there's not much we, we can control about that. Other than going to the manufacturer and saying, we think we found something in your firmware that's causing this not to work. Whether it's a bug or a feature, we don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I need to put a scissor in this. The coffee break would end at... So we can talk about this over coffee. Move. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.